In this video, let's talk about the difference between maybe, probably, and definitely. This is a question that I received from a student and I'm happy to help you use these confidently. Of course, my name's Jennifer from j4senglish.com and this channel is dedicated to helping you sound like a fluent, confident, natural English speaker. Now, before we go any further, make sure you subscribe and hit that bell icon so you're notified every time I post a new lesson. Now, let's dive in with this video. Today, let's talk about the difference between maybe, probably, and definitely. Now, all three are used to talk about how likely something is to happen. The difference between them is where they are on the scale of not likely to likely. So let's see our scale. Now, we can put maybe right in the middle. Maybe means there's a 50% chance it will happen, a 50% chance it won't happen. It's right in the middle. There are many synonyms to maybe, so other adverbs that you can use that have exactly the same meaning. The most common are perhaps and possibly. They both represent a 50% chance of happening. Now, we can go on to an event that's more likely to happen, about a 75% chance, and that's probably, probably. So the difference between maybe and probably is probably is more likely to happen. Now, let's move on to 100% or as close to 100% as we can because it's still a future event. And in that case, it would be definitely. So when I hear definitely, I think, yes, that's happening. 100% chance of happening or as close to as 100 as you can, 99, 98 very close to 100. So that's the difference, just how likely they are to happen. So let's use these in an example. Let's say I ask you, are you going to the party tonight? Now you could reply back and say, maybe, just that one word, maybe. I know there's a 50% chance of you going to the party. Or you could reply back and say, probably, Probably, now I know there's a 75% chance of you going to the party. Or you could reply back and say, definitely. If you say definitely, I'd say, I'll see you there because I'm going to the party and you said definitely, which means as close to as 100% as we can. So I would say, see you at the party. Now, you can use these as one word answers, and we commonly do. You can also put them in a sentence. Now, here's where things get a little more advanced because we need to think of the placement of the adverb in the sentence. Maybe is placed at the beginning of the sentence. So I would say, maybe I'll go to the party at the very beginning. Now that only applies to maybe. With perhaps, I would say, I'll perhaps go to the party. Perhaps follows the normal adverb placement. Normal placement is before the main verb. Notice in this example, I have two verbs. I have will and go. Will is the auxiliary verb. Go is the main verb. So generally, our adverb is placed before the main verb. I'll perhaps go to the party. I'll possibly go to the party. Maybe is an exception. Maybe I'll go to the party. Probably and definitely also follow our regular adverb placement. I'll probably go to the party before the main verb, I'll definitely go to the party before the main verb. Now notice on our scale, we don't have anything below 50%. So if I wanted to show a 25% possibility lower than maybe, I would use probably 
in the negative? And I would say probably not. So as a one word, well now two word answer, are you going to the party? Probably not. So it's not a no, but there's a 75% chance I won't go to the party. It's low on our scale of likeliness. Now to put probably not in a sentence, we have not, which is negative. Now we have will go. So not and will would be combined to form won't, okay? So now we have probably, won't, and go. The placement of probably is before the auxiliary verb. So this is an irregular placement because the sentence would be, I probably won't go to the party. So with adverbs, we do have to consider their placement and there are always exceptions to rules in English. And in this case, we have two exceptions. But as one word answers, you don't need to worry about that. Now it's your turn to practice. I want you to leave four sentences in the comments using your four new adverbs and make sure you put it in a full sentence so you can practice having the correct placement of your adverb as well. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button, share it with your friends, and of course, subscribe. Now before you go, make sure you head on over to my website, jforestenglish.com, and download your free speaking guide. In this guide, I share six tips on how to speak English fluently and confidently. And until next time, happy studying. All right, awesome job adding these new adverbs to your vocabulary and getting really comfortable with sentence structure as well. You're going to sound very advanced by the end of this, so leave your examples in the comments to make sure you get that practice and repetition, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.